Hello everyone, James Dunnan here and today we're going to take DNA and our look at nucleic acids one step further and now we're going to look at RNA. So if we go back to DNA and if you haven't seen the video I'll post a link in the description, check DNA out first. If we remember about DNA, we remember that it is a deoxyribonucleic acid which meant it was missing one oxygen in the uh, second prime section of that uh, sugar and it had the following bases guanine, cytosine, arginine, thymine and we remember that this molecule had a specific sequence and that sequence determined all of the features of that particular organism so its structure, the physiology, even some of its behaviour. We remembered it was double stranded and it had complementary base pairing so guanine paired with cytosine and arginine paired with thymine. So where does RNA play in, uh, come in? Well, if DNA is a textbook, RNA is really a chapter, or even more likely a copy of a chapter. Okay, so I would say probably if we talk about DNA, I would say a gene would be a chapter, but a RNA molecule is sort of a copy of that, a photocopy if you will. So let's look at the structure of RNA. Okay, so now you can see RNA here is single stranded. It's no longer double stranded. And if we look at that second prime location, we now have an oxygen there. So now it's just ribonucleic acid. If we check out the bases, cytosine's still here, guanine's still here, arginine's still here, but now thymine has been replaced by uracil. So it still has four bases, it just doesn't have the exact same four bases as DNA. Thymine's being replaced with uracil, okay? And as we go into protein synthesis, um, when we look at that in more detail, you see um, how, where that comes into play, okay? But we still have our sugar, and we still have our phosphate backbone, Okay, so they still form our backbone, but we no longer have another strand running in the opposite direction. So if you remember I talked about DNA being a very stable molecule, RNA is not very stable, okay? And it's good that it's that way, because if this is a copy of a piece of instruction, we don't want that instruction being around forever, just being continually used. We want it to deteriorate, and then if we want that instruction again, we just create another copy. So RNA is a very important molecule, and the fact that it deteriorates is actually um, one of its benefits, okay? So we still have this ribose sugar with a phosphate, and we still have these bases connected, okay? So where does RNA come from? Well, RNA is um, basically transcribed from DNA. We'll get into that in a bit more detail when we look at protein synthesis, but if you could imagine that this uh, DNA molecule is unzipped and we have just the, base, the two sides exposed, okay, let's say the sequence on one side was A, T, G, C, A, T, T, C. Well then our messenger RNA or our RNA molecule doesn't have to be messenger RNA, we'll get to that in a sec, but an RNA molecule is going to be um, the complementary base pairing of that sequence, remembering that the T, where we normally have a T, is going to be replaced by a U. So in this case, this RNA molecule will have the sequence U, A, C, G, U, A, A, G. And this would be our RNA molecule. And here in red, we have the DNA, the two DNA strands, okay? So our RNA molecule comes directly from our DNA molecule. Okay, so what does RNA become? Well, it really has three main um, structural components, I guess, or three main structures that it can form. 
which again are all related to protein synthesis, which we'll get to later. But they are messenger RNA, which is basically just a single piece of RNA, which would be a copy of our original DNA strand, or a segment of that DNA strand. It could form ribosomal RNA, okay? So we have a very special part in the nucleus that's just pumping out ribosomal RNA all the time called the nucleolus. And ribosomal is really important because it actually connects transfer RNA with messenger RNA in a very controlled manner. So transfer RNA also is made up of RNA and it has a very uh, cool aspect that it carries amino acids on top, okay? So we had 20 different amino acids, okay? So we have a specific um, transfer RNA to carry an amino acid, okay? So we've got ribosomal RNA that can be made from ribonucleic acid, we've got messenger RNA, and we've got transfer RNA. Sometimes they're just uh, written as, say, mRNA or tRNA or rRNA, okay? They're the three main, there are others, but they're the three main things that uh, RNA makes and is used for inside cells, okay? And they're all involved in creating proteins, which we'll get to in our next video. So recap, RNA, very similar to DNA, except it's single-stranded, still has a ribose sugar, but it has that extra oxygen, so it's no longer deoxy. Um, it has four bases, but the thiamine's being replaced with uracil. So if I draw what that looks like, we're going to have our sugar attached to its phosphate, attached to a base at that first prime, which could either be A, U, C, or G, arginine, uracil, cytosine, or guanine. Spelling's extremely important. And it's just single-stranded. So then we'd have a new ribosugar come in, and it would bring its phosphate, and then that phosphate would bind to the third prime section of uh, the uh, ribosugar above. And then again, it would bring in another phosphate, which would then join to that third prime section of that ribosugar, and we'd start building up a RNA with the bases along. Now, sometimes for a little bit of stability, an RNA molecule might fold in on itself and form some bonding between those bases for a little bit of extra stability. But if you just imagine it as a straight line, that's okay as well. Okay, so we're just gonna have a quick recap about the DNA, RNA, their differences and their similarities. So DNA is double-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. Uh, DNA is deoxy, meaning missing oxygen, okay, whereas this has the oxygen. This one has thymine as one of its bases, whereas RNA has uracil, okay. Um, it is quite stable, unstable, long, short. Similarities, both contain a ribose sugar. Okay, um, they both have A, G, and C, and they both have the phosphate sugar backbone. If I've missed any, make sure you comment below and I'll uh, make sure I acknowledge you or at least pop it in the next video or in the comments or whatever before. But if you find anything else out, make sure you let me know and I'll make sure I include it in, in any of my next videos. But I think they're the main ones. 
Okay, so if you remember um, watching back from the last DNA video, there was a question at the end. Now, if you haven't seen this question, uh, make sure you go back to that video, have a look, answer in the comment section below, because I'm going to go through the answer right now. Okay, so if we've got 30% of our DNA molecule being thymine, what percentage of the DNA molecule is cytosine? Okay, so if we know that 30% of our molecule is thymine, that must mean that it is base pairing with arginine. So all of those um, bases that are thymine, on the other strand, they have to be arginine. So if 30% of the molecule is thymine, then that means 30% has to be arginine. That totals 60%, doesn't it? So if I've got 60% of my DNA molecule being thymine and arginine, that only leaves 40% being cytosine and guanine. Now, if 40% are cytosine and guanine paired together, we have to have equal numbers to pair, then that must mean that 20% is going to be guanine and 20% is going to be cytosine. So there's our answer. Okay, 30% thymine must pair with arginine. That must mean there's another 30% of the bases that are uh, going to be arginine. 6% total, left 40%, 20% going to be guanine, 20% going to be cytosine. Okay. Now, if I just back that off so I've got some space. If 30% of an RNA molecule is arginine, what percentage of the RNA molecule is cytosine? Post your, question, post your answers below like always. Uh, try and highlight your multiple choice questions or your short answer questions like this as well. It really makes it easy to see what the most important things are. But have a go at that question. As always, subscribe to my channel. Um, feel free to ask me any questions and I can do follow-up videos or whatever. See you later.